Okay. What's up? This vlog is going to be different. Not the day in the life vlog, traveling around, any stuff, you know, stream of consciousness stuff. This is actually a film study. Been a while, huh? <laughs> I'm excited about it. The reason I'm doing a film study, it's about the Mississippi State Receiving Corps, is because of this comment from Steve Spurrier Jr. this week at a interview press conference. Uh, you know, again, we, we don't spend a lot of time talking about last year. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't care where they've been or what they've done, and that they know who we are. When we walked in here, we walked in with the sheets with what this offense demands of them what Washington State's done, what Coach Leach's track record is in this offense. This is what it is. And I don't care if you had 20 receptions last year or none. This year, we expect five or six of you guys to catch 60. So I just got to think it. They're going to catch the, – the receiving group's going to catch all these passes, so many more passes in games this year than they did a year ago or the year before, anytime really, but these same kids, right? And then I saw this tweet from Tyler Horka, who's a really good reporter – beat writer for Mississippi State, covers them for the Clarion Ledger, and he tweeted this out, this stat. Mississippi State returns players who combined, combined, for 82 catches in 2019. On the other hand, Washington State had two players with more receptions than that, and one of them was the running back. <laughs> so, I mean, to word it another way, two players individually on Washington State's team had more receptions themselves than the entire Mississippi State team. And one of the players who did it was the running back at Washington State. And he finished it up by saying Mike Leach's offense is going to be unlike anything MSU fans have ever rooted for. And he is exactly right. Nobody around here has ever seen anything like it. The, the numbers backed it up. So I got to thinking, what was it like? Let's go back and look at what it was like when he took over at other stops as the head coach. From the other guy at Texas Tech to his first year, the other guy at Washington State to Mike's first year at Washington State. And I think Texas Tech is a closer comparison. Now, it was 20 years ago. Things are different a lot, but a closer comparison because in 99, the year before he went to Texas Tech, they were a running football team, pretty much. They weren't very good, but they were a running team. And you look at the numbers on that 99 uh Texas Tech team. They had another quarterback, Rob Peters, who he threw for 1,400 yards, nine touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Kingsbury, mop-up duty, 400 yards, four TDs. But their primary offense was running the football. Um, but their leading receivers, the year before Mike Leach got to Texas Tech, um, leading receiver was a running back with 23 catches. But in terms of receiver group, the leader was Tim Baker in 99 with 22 catches. His teammate Derek Doris had 19 catches for 285. And then in comes Mike Leach, and those same two guys, the leading returning receivers, uh, because the running back graduated, they came back the next year. They caught like 20 balls a year before. Baker led the team with 69 receptions for 700 yards, seven touchdowns in 2000 under Mike Leach. And Derek Doris, 56 catches. 500 yards and nine touchdowns in his first year. So they go from running team, he comes in, and immediately these guys, their their numbers of catches just exploded in the offense. And the thing was they had others. There were two other – there was another guy, the running back had 52 catches, two other receivers that had over 40 catches each, and they really spread the football around. Now, Washington State was different because they were actually throwing the ball a lot before Mike Leach got there. Um, in 2011 – Paul Wolf's last year at Washington State, they were really throwing it to just one or two guys, though. That's the difference. They weren't spreading the football around before Mike Leach got there. So 2011 at Washington State, they had a receiver, Marcus Wilson, 82 catches, 1,300 yards, 12 TDs. And another guy, Karstetter, had 60 catches the year before Leach gets there. So the difference was when Leach uh, took over at Washington State in, in uh, 2012, it wasn't so much the overall numbers. It was kind of the consistency. Yeah, I mean, the overall passing numbers were up. But again, not a huge difference. The difference was when Mike Leach came in the next year, they threw the ball to everybody a lot. So the total number of completions went up on the team in year one under Mike Leach. And instead of just 
huge numbers for one or two guys. Look at the comparison. In 2011, Washington State had three receivers with 40 or more catches and two with 60 or more. The next year, they had seven receivers with 30 or more catches, four that had 40 or more, and two that had 50 or more. They really spread it around to more people. And I think that illustrates what we're about to see this year and going forward at Mississippi State in this offense. So what I wanted to do is watch some film with you. And these are just a few plays, random plays. They, they're not selected for any reason. It's just fun to take a look at how that offense worked. This is last year, 2019 at Washington State. One of them is a home game against UCLA, shootout. The other is a road game at Oregon. Pretty good team, pretty good defense. And you can see one thing that jumps out at me. They get a lot of people open often. That's another reason why a lot of guys are catching balls and quarterbacks are having success. Think of it this way. If you send five guys out in the route, four receivers and a running back, and they all get open, then it's really hard for me as a quarterback to make the wrong read. <laughs> There's not as much pressure on me to make the perfect, you know, designation of the coverage and everything every single time when I got five choices or four out of five are open. So it's a lot harder to make the wrong read when everybody's open. And that jumps out at you in some of these plays. Watch this one from last year against UCLA. They're going to get five out, so they're going to motion the back out of there. And when he goes, you see how the linebacker runs out of there with him and follows him. That tells a quarterback right now, when I motion and this defender runs with him step for step, he goes out, he goes out, he's chasing him. I know it's man-to-man -man coverage. That's what I'm getting. So that's big in terms of a pre-snap read. In your team, you're going to get five outs, so only five-man protection. And with it man-to-man, -man, you got safeties in the middle. They're not giving you zero, so you got four on the front and possibly a fifth. You do have to consider that you may have to throw hot if one comes off the edge you can't block. So quarterback has to read that, but he doesn't get that here. The key to this route is the mesh underneath and in the middle. The outside receiver into the boundary, the ball's on the right hash, so into the boundary to his right is the underneath mesh. And then you're going to get on top crosser and give you two options in the middle. Now, down and distance is important. You know, they're snapping the ball here. They're only going to need about a yard here on this down and distance. And so he's looking underneath to begin with, gets what he wants, and that is four and five coming five on five in protection. I got all this space in the middle. He kind of making his mind up where he's going to throw this before it even really happens. So the linebacker coming off the edge, you got it. Here's your cross underneath. He's chasing. He's beat, right? And so you can give it to him, get a first down. But what if you hang on to it? Now, we're not looking at the protection. He looks clean from here. But if he is clean, what if he hangs on and sees this chaser? It's man-to-man -man, and thinks, I've got a big play here on the crosser on top, this guy. If he hangs on to it and lets him clear the official, uh, he throws for a big play. You can see now he's already made the decision. I'm going to take the first down underneath or try to anyway. Receiver to me looks like he got a little extra shallow on this. This probably should be a little deeper. But if he pumps it right here to this crosser behind the official, he may score. Catch it. Good move. And you get a first down. So now you can kind of see what the quarterback sees. And look, you can tell what he's looking at. He sees this defender who's running with his motion, tells him it's man-to-man. -man. Really clean, clear, five-on-five -five look. Eyes come back to the middle. He's trying to find the first down. He's going to have it. Goes ahead and takes it, but he's got time. If he just hangs on and lets his man right here clear the official, throw it off the official shoulder, he's got his man beat. Could have a big play. That's actually a really good one-on-one -on -one move. If he gets tackled right there, they don't have a first down. So you get a win in the open field also. Look how they scheme this. Another play with the ball on the right hash. They've got three receivers to the wide side of the field. Going to send a fourth out there with the back just before the snap. And it just singles up that hitch route into the boundary. A short, easy throw. You can kind of see how they make that happen. We'll watch it first. Get singled up. Just throw and catch, make some yards on first down. Now, the thing about this play that, to me, it's so interesting to look at, you know, from a quarterback perspective. 
is again, right before the snap, you're gonna send four to one side. And so what that does is it really takes the coverage you've already got and makes it even harder on them. I'll show you what I mean. Pre-snap, they gave him a two safety look, but both are just off the hash, one more than the other. And on the snap, you know, what you're seeing is one backpedaling here, one trying to get back here, and this corner dropping. So it's quarters coverage, effectively. You got a hard corner here because this safety is responsible for half the field on top. And then one's gonna drop, he's responsible for a quarter of the field deep, and he's responsible for a quarter of the field deep. So it's quarter, quarter, and then half coverage. It's called cover, quarters. Well, when the back runs out, you're already running him out to the hard corner side of the quarters coverage. And all your underneath coverage is going to shift this way as well. So on the snap with a four-man rush, a linebacker trying to shift this way, you got four to one side. Same thing for the quarter safety. He sees four to one side, knows his responsibility is on this side. You've only got one receiver. He's got to backpedal, and it just totally opens up that hitch. makes it really easy throw and catch, and he's wide open. The other thing to look at, though, is what they're designing. You're five on four in pass pro, and you're open here on a hitch. You're open here. If he chooses it and flips his head to the left, he's open on the swing because you got a, a dropping secondary. And when we roll this, what we're about to see is you're about to get a two-on-one situation. As he clears and gets in the safety's face, you're going to get another deep route. You're going to send two on one safety. Now, he doesn't get that far in the progression of the play because he threw the football. But if this safety hangs here, he's got to make a decision. Am I going in here? Am I going out here? In other words, what I'm showing is when you're a quarterback and everybody is open, it's a lot harder to make the wrong read. If I go here, if I go here, if I go here, if I decide to pump a touchdown, all these guys are open, all five of them, on the same play. Okay, this is going to be that same look mesh in the middle of the field underneath and then on top balls in the middle of the field and they only need a couple of yards for a first down and i want you to keep an eye on this defensive end for ucla he's lining up like a rush defensive end in a four-man front snap of the football it's man to man now he's bailing jumps in front of the slant gets an interception or jumps in front of the mesh route underneath gets an interception now, this is a lot like the play you had earlier, except a couple of things. One is it's straight man-to-man -man with a free safety here. So it's a little bit of a different look defensively. And so what they've done is they've gone two by two receivers and are going to keep the back end in protection. So they're going six-man protection on a short yardage situation. But again, we're going to motion across make it a little harder on the defense, and they kind of have to declare. If I see this guy running with him step for step, I know for sure that they're not bailing out. They they are in man-to-man -man coverage, and that's exactly what you get. He runs. So this is like a four-man version of the five-man route we saw earlier, and that is backside outside is the underneath crosser against what looks like a six-man rush in man-to-man. -man. Backside inside is over the top crosser, so it's an effective mesh in the middle. And we're going to try to cross them up and get a wheel route open for a touchdown if we come all the way back to it. The difference is, in this case, the back is not out uh, on this side. But they have scouted this. They've already hit them once with this route on third and short. So it's a great defensive call. Bringing two linebackers make it look like we're bringing six. It occupies the back when he sees them both coming here. And we're just going to drop this defensive end into the passing lane right where we know that shallow crosser is coming, and they make the play. Quarterback's eyes are here the whole way. He never sees him. And again, though, it's a case where if he has time, he holds his football, he throws a touchdown right here to the other crosser in the mesh. Problem is, you got one back trying to block two linebackers because of your protection, and he can't do it, and i got to get rid of the football. So the combination of the two linebackers in his face and the dropping in, uh, gives him a pick over there on the backside. Just a really good defensive call. Now, 
Now you'll get a really good look at it here from the quarterback's perspective. His eyes will come back to his right, and he'll never see the dropping end. Here they are against Oregon, a little bit better defense, trying to run four verticals in the red zone. And I'll show you what they're trying to do. It's uh, three by one. The single receiver is just one-on-one. They're going to go third slot inside. It's trying to get to this hash. We're trying to get here on the vertical on the other hash and trying to spread it out here. So we're trying to get four verticals, swing that back out of there, and um, hopefully hit a touchdown. If not, bring it back down to the back. Look how Oregon plays this, though. So when the back goes in motion, there's nobody that runs with him off this side, but they pretty much have to play zone. So they're going to just swap it. They're going to bring that outside end or backer in this package down and run another one off in coverage. So they're just going to swap it on that side. What it does is when he comes down, you only get a three-man rush from Oregon on the play. They're dropping everybody else in zone coverage. So the edge, one or the other, is responsible for the back and the back and the flat. Everybody else dropping in zone. But by doing this to a what is effectively a four receiver side for Washington State, it gave Oregon four defenders plus one to that side. So they're giving up rush in favor of coverage down here in the red zone. When that quarterback sees zone and these verticals, he's seen the uh, underneath taken away. He knows it's it's I got to play off this safety on these verticals. I've either got to go here or here based on that safety. It's zone. He knows it. Now when he has a three-man rush, he's got time. Problem is, he gets spun out underneath, gets underneath coverage right there with the safety over the top. That's probably where he wants to go with the ball. If he tries to come in here to that guy on a hash, he's really got a Brett Favre that thing in there with a safety waiting on him. And you're not wanting to turn the ball over. This is a part of the field, depending on game situations, where in here you're not taking chances in normal down and distance stuff. So he doesn't take this chance right here. You know, he probably should. He probably should have let it go. I'm drilling it in there at his knee. I want him to drop down, catch that thing, and keep it away from an interception. If you hang on, his only other chance is to bring it back here in the back of the end zone to see if his guy can run it down away from coverage. But it's really good coverage from Oregon's perspective. They bracketed here and got on top. They got on top here. Yeah, that's his other option, too, would be if he let it go, he can go back shoulder. But it's a really long throw because the ball is on the left hash. That thing hangs in the air too much. This guy isn't turned. He makes a play on the ball. You turn it over. So it's really a coverage sack because you, you got the back of the end zone working for the defense down here. He doesn't get sacked, but throws it away. Here's another short yardage situation. Ball just outside the 30. They got to get it in there to about the 28. So you only need three yards for a first down. And they are in empty. Three receivers to the wide side of the field, two into the boundary. And look at the completion you get. He goes hitch, inside left, easy first down. But I want to go back to, again, kind of design. And I don't know what the rules are, what they're you know, uh, uh, the rules are for the receivers on this particular route. But they give them three down linemen. And, you know, it looks like they're in a three three five nickel look. They give them three down right here. And on the snap, Oregon, I think, disguises this really well. They show you what looks like man free with a safety free in the middle. And just like this guy would come off the edge and you'd go cover the inside third. I mean, it looks like man-to-man everywhere, man-free, I should say, pre-snap, except really for one guy, and that's the corner end of the boundary. You know, he's lined up, got those hips turned already, and whether that's a giveaway or not. But I felt like they disguised it because on the snap, he bails, he flips his hips and bails, and so now they're in three-deep zone, and it's all zone underneath with just a four-man rush. And the quarterback's got to recognize that stuff. And you can see he's already got his eyes to the left. He knows what he's getting here. So in zone, you're going to get one dropping in the middle. So look at what the route is. It's vertical on the outside. Take the corner. See if he'll run out of there. It's hitch. Find a throwing lane here off the hash. And then coming from the opposite hash, they're going dig intermediate, dig 
deep and got the back out of there as well. And so ultimately what it's doing is if they got man, he could maybe look outside if he wants to throw a touchdown, but on third and short, they can now drop, get zone. We'll play off these linebackers in the middle. That's exactly what they get. So he widens. Receiver here in the middle um, um, in the middle of those two defenders trying to find a throwing lane. He goes to the middle of the field. Look where the quarterback's eyes are. Quarterback's eyes are on this defender. He's watching him. If he runs out here to my hitch, he's coming back to the dig. If he hangs in the middle, which he does, he's going to turn and throw this hitch right out here that is open for a first down. Okay, but back to something I showed on another play. This is a third and short against a good defense on the road. They go empty, and you've got an open back shoulder to the deep side if you choose it. The corner has got his hips turned. So I can back shoulder him if I can get it over this dropper's head or if he stays inside. He's open on the hitch. He's got an open window in the middle of the field. You may drill that if you throw it early. And he's actually going to come and find a window as well. And I can dump it down here and he can run for days. They go empty on a third and short. And they have for sure four of their five receivers open, but really maybe even all five. And again, it's really hard to make a wrong read as a quarterback when whatever you read is open. Here's another one against Oregon. Three by one. Third slot receiver inside of the wide side of the field gets open coming across the field. And it comes behind those dropping linebackers. He drills them for a big play. Let's go back and uh, take a look at it. From a court perspective, his back is set to his right. So it's, you know, gives Oregon a look of, you know, it could be empty three by two. But we're going to see on the snap they have four to one side go single up over here to the boundary. Again, Oregon goes 3-3 three, three, and 5 in the secondary and they kind of disguise it well again. You know, put a safety over the ball middle of the hash, give it sort of a man-to-man look out here. Same here with him lined up inside, trying to disguise what they're doing so that it would fool the QB. On the snap, they totally flip it on him. I think quarterback's eyes are in the right place. It's on that Inside safety, lined up over the third receiver inside, who is now flying out of there to go deep coverage, giving a man look, rotating this thing back out to a zone. It's only a three-man rush. He's in no hurry at all. Two safeties dropping out field side over there, going quarter and quarter coverage. This guy, they're kind of matching up on this side with underneath help. So it's sort of like a quarters coverage zone, and they're going to get everybody open. He comes around behind. This is who they hit, obviously. I guess everybody but the runoff on this side is open. But your crosser is open. They're going to curl this thing into the throwing lane out here on this hash. And the wheel from um, from the outside receiver, not wheel, but the uh, go. Um, you had the attention of the outside defender because the underneath, he's wide open as well. They get three guys open deep on this route. When he throws the football, you even had indecision out here on who's got the underneath coverage. So they have one, two, three, and four wide open on the play. And if you wanted to say all five, you could because this corner has turned and begun to run full speed. And if I'm the quarterback and I drill it in here on the hip and throw a good back shoulder, that's a completion too. So again, in a first and 10 situation, they go four wides, get five out in the route, and all five of them are open. You can't make a wrong read when everybody's open. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Little film study, different kind of vlog. Man, I love doing this. I'm so ready to have some real games. When they have the FCS game on Saturday night, I may do like a 15-play film study of Austin P in Central Arkansas. Just because. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. See you on the next one. Good content. Really good content. See you next time. See you.